Hey gang, it's your boy Platt, and today I show you how to make beef jerky using a dehydrator. So let's go. Alright, so if you've been watching the channel lately, you know in the last few months I've gotten into making beef jerky. I've made, uh, you know, beef jerky, beef jerky with ground beef, turkey jerky, bourbon jerky. I made several different varieties of jerky and I made it all using the oven. Produced, you know, quality jerky just fine. Um, but the more I've researched jerky and other things, uh, things like making dehydrated, you know, fruit chips or like dehydrating garlic to make your own garlic powder or whatever, I've kind of come to the conclusion, and I was going to get to it anyway, that I might as well go ahead and buy a dehydrator. And that's what I went and done. Um, I will have a link down below for this dehydrator too. But anyway, I, I picked up this dehydrator and I thought, well, naturally I've got to make beef jerky with it. And that's what we're going to do here today. Uh, real quick on the beef jerky we're going to make. Uh, I'm going to, I've got a pound of ground turkey. You could use you know, ground beef, whatever animal you like, as long as it's lean. You want to make sure it's lean meat. That's why I chose turkey. That and it was on sale. Uh, but anyway, i got a pound of ground turkey. And since this video is really about more about the dehydrator and comparing the dehydrator to an oven, I'm just going to do a pretty simple batch. I have uh, my jerky seasoning and cure kit. Uh, I did a video previously on that and I have some of that left. So I'm going to use that to marinate my jerky. But I'm going to throw in a little uh, surprise ingredient and something I've kind of thought about. Uh, just kind of reading along on jerky, it's a lot you know, cream that marinates a lot like cream and marinade for a steak, your hamburgers, or whatever. And I thought, all right, I need to kind of work outside the box a little bit more. So what I did was I grabbed a few extra packets of Taco Bell hot sauce. So we're going to throw that. That's going to be our mystery ingredient into our uh, jerky marinade. Um, so that's going to be our jerky. I'm not going to show you how uh, it's made. You can look at my other videos. It's a pretty straightforward process. And I will leave a link down below also too for the jerky kit or uh, the seasoning kit. Uh, so that's the jerky. Let's real quick talk about the difference between using a oven for making jerky and the dehydrator. Like kind of the pros and the cons compared to contrast. Uh, one thing about using an oven, most everybody has an oven, so <laughs> you know, there's nothing to buy or whatever. You know, right there again, it saves you money for having to buy another piece of equipment. Also too. You know, these kitchens are laid out for the oven. You don't need to make any extra space. Where this dehydrator, now I'm going to have even more junk on my counter. You know, that's it's all up to you. Um, some of the cons on using an oven, depending on what you're making, the type of cut and the type of oven you have, it can take longer for that jerky to come out than it does on some of the dehydrators. Also, too, uh, just use a lot more energy. Uh, you know, your ovens are just, uh, well, they're really built, you know, to be at 300, 400 degrees, what have you, and they're just inefficient at that lower temperature. Well, this is designed, you know, to dehydrate at a lower temperature. Um, some of the pros for using the dehydrator, like I said, um, de depending on the oven and everything, it comes out faster than the oven. Uh, uses less energy than the oven. Uh, one of the great things about this compared to the oven is if you threw some jerky in the oven, you're not going to leave. You can't leave with that under oven running. You wouldn't want to do that, you know, if you had to run out and get the mail or go to your neighbors or something like that. You wouldn't want to do that. With this dehydrator, this being electric and everything, you can kind of set it and, and forget it. You're not worried about you know, the thing blowing up or you burning up anything or setting anything on fire, which is kind of nice. Um, also, too, one of the pros on this is the, the racks they use are inside uh, our dishwasher safe. So it makes cleanup a lot easier. Um, I've used little wire racks, and even when I spray them with nonstick spray, you know, the meat still kind of sticks. Cleanup's a little more of an effort. But this right here with the dishwasher safe trays, I can just throw them in the dishwasher. Make my life easier. Um, also too, one of the differences, um, 
in most dehydrators, this was a little different, but most dehydrators have temperature controls that you could, you know, you could really control that temperature to a degree or two. This this oven, and I'm just using this oven as an example, uh, the lowest will get 170, but to kind of dehydrate better, I'll sometimes leave it cracked. Well, now temperature control is a little more variable when you have that oven cracked. <clears throat> so that becomes more of an issue with oven where you don't have to worry about that with a food dehydrator. The one big downfall food dehydrator is uh, makes a little noise. Now I'm a bachelor at Barton for a living so I'm not worried about noise, but they can make a little bit of noise. Just something to let you know. So that's uh, like a quick compare and contrast between ovens and dehydrators. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and get my marinade going, marinate my meat, and uh, we'll come back and we'll go ahead and unbox this. I know I've got, got it open a little bit, uh, but we'll go ahead and unbox this and kind of talk about the dehydrator itself. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox this dehydrator. This is a Presto food dehydrator. The model number is 6300. Uh, they have other varieties, larger sizes, uh, with more, uh, some with more controls, this, that, and the other. This is pretty much their base model. Uh, I'm, you can find these retail stores or Amazon, like I said, I'll link down for it on that. Uh, this ran me, uh, I think, $39.99, something like that. So around $40, nothing too expensive. Um, again, if you're just getting into jerky or dehydration, you know, it's probably all that you would need. So let's go ahead and unbox this, see what we have inside. I already pulled out the instructions, so that's why I had her open. to places like Bass Pros and Warber and looked at their uh, dehydrators, much larger. And again, if you're doing, you know, larger batches, that makes sense. So, anyway, let's see what we got here. First, we have the lead, the dehydro, I guess that's the name of this, dehydro, food dehydrator. about that we got the cord unwrapped um the cord actually they have little hooks here and you can store the cord underneath so you don't have to worry about that hanging around um they give you a little sheet to talk about how to assemble these trays or rack them up they presto besides selling this dehydrator also sells additional trays they uh, sell perforated mats that go on these they also sell a specialized tray where you can make it's like a it's like a silicone mat that goes on these trays where you can make uh, like your own fruit roll-ups at home. I haven't researched that a lot, but I know that's a uh, a thing people are doing with these dehydrators. Um, so they sell other accessories. They sell jerky guns uh, inside inside the instruction manual. Is also marinade recipes. Uh, I think they also sell their own marinades, jerky guns, salad, you know, other products that go along with this. So uh, if, you, if you like this, you can build on it. Uh, here are the trays. They have four trays, a set of four trays. You can buy more trays. And then the base itself. Um, I believe the deal is you turn the handles down on the bottom one. And then the next tray, you would turn it the other way. Nope, you would turn it the other way. Yep. And you just kind of. Oh, no, 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 no. Then you would add one. Yep. Without a handle. Then you would put down the one with the handle. 
and then one on top out the handle. And that's how you stack these up. That's four trays. You can get a total of eight trays on this machine and it still works. Uh, this machine's beyond simple. There's no dials, no nothing. You literally plug it in and it starts. There's not even an on off switch. You just plug it in and it goes. Um, it sit for, I believe, 160 or 160 to 165 degrees. So unlike some of the other dehydrators that get a little bit lower, like 125 or whatever, you know, if you're dehydrating fruit or whatever, uh, this comes with just one standard setting. That's why it's kind of the base model. Uh, that being said, though, it, it hits the temperature we need for a jerky, if you, especially if you're using ground meats, you want to hit that 160, 165 range. So that's all we're worried about. Um, like I said, uh, no on-off switch, nothing like that. Plug in and forget it. And we're, we're about simple here on the Platter channel. So anyway, that's just a quick overview of the dehydrator. Let's go ahead and come back when our marinade's done. And I'll go ahead and lay out our jerky on our trays. And we'll uh, go ahead and make some jerky with our new dehydrator. All right, the old jerky gun is locked, cocked, and ready to rock. And we're just going to spread it out over these trays. Now, one thing you don't want to do with these trays is put anything over this center circle. This is where the airflow uh, down the base is, is uh, where the fan to uh, circulate the area. So you want to leave this center open, but the rest of this we have to work with. I'm just going to lay down some strips here. Do it like this. Uh, just like with the oven, you don't want any overlap on the strips. Uh, you also want to give a little space uh, for air circulation between your strips. I've seen people lay them circular like this, do kind of strips like I do, do them across, however you want. Just again, be sure to give room to allow for airflow between your strips and I'm going to try to get this all on the two trays I have so let me finish laying these strips out and we'll come back to turn on our dehydrator all right so we've got our jerky spread out over our trays I used about two and a half trays I didn't need to cover uh, quite three of them and I gave plenty of space I probably could have crowded everything on two but we just went uh, with two and a half then well, go ahead and put on my lid, and now the moment of truth. Let's turn this bad boy on. All right, we're off. We're cooking. Um, you could probably hear that. Um, I could hear, it, but I wouldn't say it's really loud. If I had the TV going or whatever, or if I was in another room, it you not know, much louder than a regular fan. We are going to let this go for the next four hours in the instructions it's said anywhere from four to eight hours um, in the oven I was getting jerky done between the around the four and a half hour mark sometimes five hours so we'll let this go for four hours come back and see if we need to let it go any longer or not um, one thing about the jerky gun make sure I have thinner strips so I'm not worried about having too thick of a piece of meat but anyway we're gonna let this go for four hours and we'll come back and check on it and then uh, hopefully we have some jerky to try all right so it's been four hours I just unplugged our dehydrator and we'll check our jerky the uh, it's a little warm it's not hot oh yeah it feels nice done this oh nice little snap to it um, actually Seems a little drier than, than the jerky that comes out four hours plus hours out of the oven. So really good drying. This is the top rack, so you like to think maybe the lower racks might be even drier, but now to the important part. Let's give her a try. Oh, that's nice. It's actually flavor kind of pops a little bit. 
the skin, the exterior is really actually crisp. It's kind of almost kind of has a fried texture on the exterior. Oh yeah, I think we're in winter there. There's just a little more flavor. I mean, I still got a lot of that salt, pepper kind of. Yeah, well, there's a little more pop to it. I really like that. A little marinade. Maybe it's maybe it's a Taco Bell sauce. Well, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets you two know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Well, until next time, bottoms up.